Hello and welcome to space here from the coast of northern Norway where we've come to the Andoya Space Centre to meet scientists working on a new satellite called Aeolus which is measuring the winds all around our planet for the very first time. Well right now they're working on calibrating and validating all of the measurements they're getting from orbit. With the rumble of a Vega rocket, a groundbreaking weather mission begins. In late August this year, ESA's long-awaited Aeolus satellite set off to space, flying fast and low, just 320 kilometers above our heads. So Aeolus is circling the Earth as, at the moment that we are speaking. It's moving from the North Pole to the South Pole and back again uh, in something called the polar orbit. And as it's moving around the Earth like this, the Earth is rotating below it. And that makes Eolos make measurements around the globe actually 16 times per day. Aeolus uses a laser system called a LIDAR to measure the wind speed and direction along its orbit. No space mission has ever done that before. However, no space mission can operate in isolation. And here in Norway, the science team is now swinging into action. The Ondoya Space Centre is a dedicated multi-instrument atmospheric observatory 300 kilometres inside the Arctic Circle. Data gathered here will play a key role in calibrating and validating the wind measurements from space. It is a unique place. If you look at uh, our location uh, with this observatory at 69 degrees north, and there are no observatories being able to, to do measurements together with ALUS. So this is the one and only uh, station doing LiDAR measurements uh, on wind velocity and wind directions uh, at this latitude in the northern hemisphere. These two telescopes from the Leibniz Institute of Atmospheric Physics work in a similar way to the Aeolus satellite using lasers to observe the wind. That means the scientists can rely on them and measurements from other ground stations for comparison throughout the Aeolus mission. But it's very important to understand or to check that the uh, satellite measurements that we do are correct for all types of weather, uh, that being uh, storms coming in, that being uh, good weather conditions. And we need to have the comparison with these good quality ground measurements uh, for all types of weather conditions. And this is why it's important not to measure once and compare, but really to keep on measuring over time. Other kinds of data are also used to gauge the accuracy of Aeolus's instruments, including readings from weather balloons. Here, the team launches balloons twice a day. They gather local measurements of wind speed, temperature and humidity. And those parameters form the baseline of any weather forecast. With this, we get in situ measurements of wind which is a very important thing in calibrating and validating the measurements from the satellite. So we can know that we're measuring in approximately the same area. Uh, of course, the balloon will drift off with wind, uh, but we will know that we have the same general coverage and we can compare the measurements from, from the satellite and the balloon. Aeolus is not alone. Other weather satellites observe temperature and humidity and have done so for decades. However, there is no global system to measure winds around our planet. Wind is the missing piece of the weather puzzle, as Lars Isaacson from the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts, ECMWF, explains. Have some of the largest forecast errors we have had for the last five years have been linked to our lack of understanding of the winds in the tropics. You don't have any wind information over the oceans, uh, southern Pacific, no wind information at all. Even in the Atlantic, you have very little information about wind. All the new data from Aeolus will pass through ECMWF to be processed and corrected against other weather data before being passed on to forecasters. However, this ESA mission is officially a test and is yet to prove itself. Nobody knows if it will work yet, so. And after, if it works well, we will put it in our numerical weather models to improve the estimation of the initial state. That's how the weather is today, which is important for doing our weather prediction. Everything depends on how the weather is today, and then you integrate a 
complex mathematical model forward in time that gives you the weather forecast for the days ahead. Aeolus can measure wind speed and direction from the Earth's surface right up to 30 kilometers in altitude. So far, its delicate laser instrument appears to be working as intended. Only a few weeks after we have launched the instrument into space and uh, we've started to check out the satellite and check out the instrument and we switch it on, we already are starting to get data that are looking like the data that we will have as our end product. So it's really exciting. Looking ahead after they've gathered several years of data, the scientists hope to use Aeolus to analyse longer term trends and for climate modelling. In a changing climate like we have it now, the temperature difference between the equator and the pole is actually getting smaller. And by that, you're changing the way the wind is flowing around in the atmosphere to transport the energy around. So by understanding this in more detail, we will be able to hold more into how weather will change also in the future climate. So if this mission ends well, then further Aeolus missions could be launched to feed future weather forecasts with even more wind data. And now to the part of the show in which we take your questions about the universe and put them to the experts using the hashtag AskSpace. And I'm joined via video link by Professor Erland Schillian, one of the world's leading climate experts, director of the Centre for Climate Research in Singapore. Professor Schillian, we've had a question from Hans Decker. He would like to know, is the planet going to get hot as hell? Well, it's an interesting question. We know that this year, many regions in the Northern Hemisphere have had a very hot summer. On a global scale, we also know that over the last 20 years, actually 18 of these years have been the hottest on record. We know that the increasing global temperatures that we have seen over the past century, actually, are directly linked to human activities. It's man's burning of fossil fuels that increases carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere and raises global temperatures. Uh, the increase in carbon dioxide is very likely to continue into the future. And the more carbon dioxide we have in the atmosphere, the hotter it gets. OK, well, I'm here in northern Norway, and this year they had temperatures well over 30 degrees in the daytime, over 20 degrees in the nighttime. Could it get hotter than that? Well, the climate simulations that we have done have shown that, yes, actually, we could have a climate also in the Nordic countries, which comes close to central European climates. Stockholm could have the, the climate of Paris in 50 to 100 years from now. So there is an increased risk for hotter summers, but exactly how hot it will get and when is still very, very uncertain. Professor Schlien, thanks very much for joining us on Ask Space. You can ask your questions about the universe using the Ask Space hashtag, and we'll try to answer them. And you can follow other space news on Euronews.com. <laughs>